Alright, this is December 25th, 2023, first entry. Where do I begin? I guess we'll just start at the beginning and see where it takes us. So the story of my birth is a bit varied. There's one, there's a, a version I cannot verify or prove or confirm in any sort of way, but I do like sharing it. And then there's the, the basic facts of what I know. Uh, my uh, birth certificate says Martin Army Hospital, Fort Benning, Georgia. So there is that. But the story goes, my mom went into labor, and she went into the military hospital there, which you're never known to have the best quality of care. Uh, while she was in there, apparently, a nurse came in and drew blood out and then started laughing and squirting it all over the room. And this is a story from my biological father, just to put that out there. And uh, so he says that he runs over and calls an ambulance to take her to another hospital. <clears throat> and that I ended up costing, you know, several tens of thousands of dollars or, or whatever because of this whole crazy incident of my birth. And that's, you know, that's one of the ways I was told that I came into this, to this earth. After I was born, as far as I know, we, uh, we lived in... Maybe some other places, but we definitely lived at one point in, in the very early years. I think I was born in the hospital. We lived in Yogi Bear RV Park. And I have memories, the slightest, faintest, but I remember, you know, it feels like the most massive Yogi Bear statue in the world. Um, obviously, I guess, as an infant, it would seem huge. And, and just kind of little things, but not much at all. I do remember at some point... I'm not sure if we lived in the apartments or not, but I remember going to some apartments, and it was the first time I ever had those little little paper fire fireworks that you just throw, and, and on contact, they, you know, make a little poof, spark thing, bang. I'm standing on the second story of a, a apartment building, throwing them down somewhere in Georgia. Things get a little fuzzy. I mean, granted, it would be, and this is all happening, I think, before I was two or so. Somewhere between two and five, a whole variety of things happened. I get things out of order, I'm pretty certain, but let's give her a shot. We lived in a, a pink house in Florida. We called it the pink house. It was this big two-story, you know, really nice place, cross street from the water kind of thing. And my grandparents on my mother's side lived in a camper in the yard. And, they had, you know, scooters and doing, you know, the, the whole retirement thing. Um, and I can remember little moments there. I can remember not being able to pronounce my sister's name, and which is Erica, um, calling her Kaka. Uh, I can remember my uh, grandparents getting locked out of their camper and opening the small, tiny little storage hatch and talking me through how to go through inside and get inside and open and unlock the door. Um, maybe around three or four? probably three uh, my mother and my biological father had separated and uh, my biological father had just taken me with him to go live with him but the things I do remember very 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 clearly I remember staying in very very small very rundown motels where I would sleep on the floor and it was like the little like you know one by two shelf with a um, curtain rod below it we'd wrap a sheet around that which would give me like some you know a little bit of coverage from like the chest up and head up when i slept down there on the floor my father slept on the bed it was always like a little sweet but still very very run down you know that dark green color kind of tells you a lot i remember mostly eating um toast and peanut butter fluff and peanut butter um that was like my favorite thing ever to eat memories I have while being in those kind of places are one is pulling out of a very large parking lot probably a shopping mall at a very high rate of speed my dad's in some old muscle car with you know we got pipes coming out of the hood and I remember turning very sharply to the left 
and my door, the passenger door opens, and I go flying out of the car, and he grabs my foot, I have a cowboy boot on, and the boot comes off on his hand, and he quickly reaches over and grabs my ankle, yanks me in, reaches over, shuts the door, but never slows down. So I suspect we were running from the law at that point. Um, another time I remember, you know, we're leaving the motel very, very quickly, and he throws me over his shoulder, and he's running, and what I see behind us because I'm on over the shoulder, our police officers chasing after us. Um, I guess he was a fast runner in those days or something, because I have no recollection of him, of him ever catching us. Um, and I, I always, I stayed with him until the day I'll get to here very shortly. I have one positive memory. I guess I'll save that one for last and, and get to a few other ones. So he would be out constantly, probably robbing or doing coke with his friends or who knows um he hasn't had the best reputation throughout his life so i didn't have too much to great to to work with from the start but i, I think i've done okay we'll get to the <laughs> where i've done okay because there's some rough patches ahead be, be be forewarned in that motel he was out he'd be gone most of the night or you know it felt like forever I really couldn't tell you my concept time wasn't great, but I'm pretty certain, yeah, he legitimately was. And on many of these nights, um, the guns he had were still there. And it was an old rifle. I guess not all that old, but it was a lever-action rifle that lived up on the shelf in the, in the motel. And then between the mattress and the, the box ring, back in the day when we still had those, was a silver pistol. Couldn't tell you what it was. I mean, I can still see it very clearly, but... Based on my knowledge back then, I, I couldn't say any, you know, it, it definitely wasn't smaller. It was probably at least a 9mm, maybe bigger. Uh, all that aside, doesn't really serve a purpose, but I would play with that thing uh, in that motel. And I would sit there and on a little, like, black and white rabbit ear antenna TV, I would watch Alfred Hitchcock and Tales from the Crypt. And I would point this pistol at the things on the TV and I would pretend to shoot them. And uh, I guess it was just a lot of luck involved with that whole experience. Um, I don't know if my dad had ever, you know, took taken the time to, you know, tell me to keep my finger off the trigger or what a safety is and to make sure it's on or any of that. Couldn't tell you. But either way, I ended up never shooting anything. Um, works out great. Uh, positive memories. So I have a memory of riding on a motorcycle with him once. Um, that was very, that, that started a whole whole thing. You, get, you put a toddler on a motorcycle and, and they're gonna be a rider for life, pretty, pretty much. Uh, so from there, and then I have one memory of us going out to like swimming hole out in some dirt road. I had a rope swing, we could go in and and jump in and all that and having just a relatively pleasant day out there but I also still remember you know things getting heated and being frustrations and being scared and uncomfortable at periods too um, I did not realize that until right now as I'm talking about it so I was like four or so when I guess my dad had kind of got his things together and he had found a lady who he's still with today um, as far as I know, you know, 40, 50 years later, 50 years later, um, but not necessarily that, like, they're in love, and that's why we'll get into that, too. Um, so it was with her, and we were living there, and I remember, you know, we had a dog, and we had a bobcat we saved from the, the you know, made friends with in the backyard, or I don't remember how, I don't, I wasn't, but it would come in, we had bobcat hang out with us, uh, and I had, you know, pretty decent bunk bed, and like some He-Man sheets and things seemed relatively normal, I guess, for a brief period. Don't know how long that lasted, how we got in there. I suspect that the lady he got with, uh, her parents helped make that whole stable household thing happen. And then but my parents, or my mom, had remarried to a guy and they showed up at the door. I had no idea what's going on. I really had no like memory of even who she was at that point in my life. 
Um, like I can now remember things from before, but I, that night, as far as I knew, they were just two complete strangers that I had to now leave with. 